Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Hati Allah, Hati Ya Rasul, all al amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajis, so da'ifu, miskeen, azal, jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us a life in which to see these holy months and the holy month of Shahwat Subhanahu wa ta'ala arshi amma yasifoon. Alhamdulillah the reality of taking a path to be no one and Allah describing in Surah Al-Balad that have and have you taken the way and then what can we describe the way and is the freeing of a slave. Alhamdulillah only Allah come into our hearts and remind us that the slave is the soul and that our nafs and shaitan has imprisoned our reality and that this path its first step in the month of Muharram Laila anta subhanika inni kuntum min dhalimeen that glory be to Allah and verily I am an oppressor to myself. And many people coming new or not familiar with these teachings they think to themselves, well I'm not really an oppressor to myself, not understanding the reality, thinking that they their actions are okay, maybe not so bad but so far off from the reality. That the reality is the soul is from paradise and when people grow into maturity 99.99% have imprisoned their soul. Their bad character grows, the partnership with the devils and bad desires grow and the two of them become partners against the only thing divine about us being the soul. The only thing that Allah Almighty is concerned about, not the nafs, not the physical body that's perishing and going into the grave, but I gave you a light and a reality from paradise, something from my eternal oceans and sustained from Divinely Presence and you have imprisoned it and you don't realize that you are the prisoner and this dunya has imprisoned you with the cage of desires, the material world has imprisoned people, their physicality has imprisoned their soul. And Allah is asking from us in this Surat al-Balad and in the city, the surah of the city on this path into the Muhammadan heart and the Muhammadan reality, it's a continuous reminder that this path is based on the freeing of the soul. That every action that we're doing is to remind ourselves that my body is an oppressor and it has teamed with shaitan to overtake my soul and overtake my reality and that's the oppression. If people don't recognize the first step of the oppression they don't know what the battle is that they're struggling for and the battle is to free the soul which is a slave and it's the servant of Allah Abdullah it's the reality in which is a servant to the Divine, its submission is perfected, its reality is perfected. Allah has Im imbued and embodied that soul with all Divine grace, all Divine knowledges. All of these teachings and these talks are a reminder like a continuous broadcasting system that the talks are a reminder for the physicality is that you have imprisoned the soul and to give the realities of the soul, the teachings of the soul, the true love of the soul into the Muhammadan reality, the prophetic reality, entering into the Divinely reality, all of these are reminders for somebody to wake up and realize, no, the, the, my soul is imprisoned and my path is based on freeing that prisoner. Every time I pray, that prisoner is becoming more free because the soul is the one who comes out. So like a prisoner who has time and recreation, this is the, the freedom of the soul. Every time the nafs enters into salah it's a, a release of the soul 
to receive its Divinely grace, its Divinely sustenance, everything. Imagine the oppression of the soul when it can't eat, it can't drink, it can't praise in the realities in which Allah gave to it. Although we are not feeding it but the actions of our, our actions can feed the soul. In the zikr, the remembrance, the salah, the prayer, the good deeds, those are all the feeding of the soul. Those are all the energizing of the soul. The, the feeding of your body, it feeds your body, but the feeding of others and, and spiritual practices is the food of the soul. So those whom are oppressing their soul by not having the actions that benefit the soul, not having selfless actions then they are truly big zalims and oppressors against the soul. And then the entirety of the surah is describing those whom they think their physicality and their wealth sets them apart. And then Allah describing, no that's of no value. But the one whom frees their slave means the one whom takes upon their physicality and all the wealth of Allah granted to that one who struggles against themselves to free their soul. And then the feeding of the slave was again is the good deeds and feeding of others is the food of the soul. Everything in this reality is the binary. Means that you think you feed yourself and you're eating at a, at a event and you're feeding yourself. But to go and to feed others is actually the feeding of the soul. The good deeds toward others is actually the feeding of our soul. When we feed others and do things of a selfless nature, it's the true sustenance of the soul. And the breaking free of, of the satanic desires and bad desires, then is again the freeing of that soul. And we pray that Allah grant us more and more understanding of, of that reality and that that's the number one oppression, our struggle is to let that soul to be free, to achieve its realities, its lights, its blessings. Any reference to freeing of the soul is about our, our soul. The freeing of a slave is about our soul. That Allah wants the soul to be out, the soul to experience and the soul to guide and son, not their nafs and the partnering with shaitan. We pray that Allah in this holy month dress us and bless us from its realities. And then the next month coming is Surah Zalzala in which Allah describes that which she hidden inside will be brought out. Means it requires the quaking and shaking of the physicality to bring one's reality out. That's why the struggle, that's why the good deeds, that's why the good actions. It's not for the self, oh I'm a good person, no it's the, the nafs of the person has imprisoned the real occupant. The one whom Allah is concerned about is the soul. The one whom Allah wants to be fed is the soul, not the person feeding themselves. But when they enter into acts that are selfless and they begin the feeding of others, it gives a power to the soul. don't know if the binary is being understood, that you do something else that actually gives to you. But in this life we think that we should give to ourselves, especially the youth coming now that, I got to take what's mine and I got to take it, I got to get it. And Allah is actually teaching, no it's actually the opposite, that if you busy your time feeding other people, you've actually empowered yourself because the dunya teaches them it's the opposite. No, 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 I got to eat what I can eat, I put all the food in front of me, I don't really care for other people what they're eating. And they think that they're going to get strong by that, that they'll be healthy by that. All the power and health that we believe comes from Allah is not eating your vegetables and eating this and eating that and, and videos on how much you can eat of this and this and delicious foods, organic foods, expensive foods while poor people eat the poor foods. But Allah just said, no it's actually the opposite. If you busy your time feeding other people, I will feed your soul. Your soul will be benefiting. 
if your soul becomes powerful, the soul is the one that's healing. Your healing is from inside out, not outside in. You can do nothing out to get in, but everything you do in will take care of everything inside. If you take care of your soul, it takes care of everything inside and feeds the outside by the, by the practice of its illumination and the blessings of its immensity of grace, it purifies the outside. That's the difference between external students and internal students. And Mawlana Shaykh would describe them like a clock, that there, there are people whom they're like a clock and their, their long hand and short hand is fixed and doesn't really work. So anytime you look at them it's always three o'clock because it's just a clock that you know it has one hand here, one hand here but there's nothing inside of it. An empty clock it appears to be telling the time but it's stuck on one thing means that they focused only on external. And you'll see the same for uh, external doctors, external healers, external scholars, external students. Everything is their focus is outside and there is no focus inside. And Mawlana Shaykh described they're like a clock that you can never tell the time, means they have no benefit. They're stuck always on the same time, they don't serve a purpose. And the reality comes to teach us, fix your inside. For if your inside works and this clock of yours is really built, anyone who looks at you can tell the time. Means your inner will control everything. And that's what this whole teaching of all these months is teaching us. The malakut and your reality controls everything. If your reality is corrupt, there's nothing you can do with your physicality that's of any benefit, it's just the rotten outside. If inside is corrupt, inside is dirty, inside is not filled with Divine grace, there's no use for the outside. A clock that doesn't tell time is not something precious, not on earth and not in heaven. If you, if you had a, a, a cloak, a watch, something that doesn't tell time, you can't trade it for anything. Now Allah is saying this for dunya, what do you think for Akira we're going to be fooled up there? So the tariqahs are coming to teach, fix your inside, empower your inside but you have to understand the binary. Every time you want to feed yourself, I want to be healthy, actually no, the true health is go out and feed somebody else. If you're sick, go out and feed somebody else. All the, the proper vegetables is not going to give you the shifa, is not going to give you the healing. Allah is teaching us through this binary that not only you have to use your heart, you have to understand that if you go and feed someone else, give someone else water, give someone else a help, then you understand now the system of the soul. That when I go out and do selfless acts and charitable acts and, and these things that are beneficial to my soul, if I sit and I meditate, I do my zikr, I do my, my salawats, I do all of this beatific energy for the soul, that's what brings a healing onto my physicality. That's why they teach that give your sadaqah, give your zakat, do these things because this is the medicine, ismuhu dawas wa zikruhum shafas is that these are the medicines of the soul, these are the healings and the protection of the soul. All that you do for physicality can benefit no one, it's all but an illusion. That they think they're going to go eat right, eat all these vegetables, eat the expensive vegetables at the grocery store, take all of these different things. But yet they put little attention onto that which is the most powerful is the soul and the relationship with Allah And then Allah is then asking in Surat Al-Balad that this way is to free your slave. For if you have a slave and you're owner of a slave, you have no you have no value with Allah The one whom comes with a physicality and has enslaved how slavery was so horrific and Allah thinking, oh you're all modern people but you're all slave masters, you own a slave. 
and you own a slave that's so precious to the Divine, it's disturbing in the heavens. That your physicality, our physicality is imprisoning the only creature that Allah is interested in and that's the eternal soul made from oceans of Divine light and by now we have understood this is the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad this light that been borrowed from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah took from that light and made the souls. As a result the preciousness, the Divine grace and love upon that reality, that becomes then the secret. Pious people and those whom inherited from pious people, they understood that everything they do towards their soul is the healing for their soul, the empowerment of their soul and no doubt the power for their physicality. And that's why the shaykhs then say, well then give, then do your zakat, do your service, go out and feed people, feed… Why are they telling feed people as if, if the only concern was to, to take away the, the hunger of people which should be their only concern because people are wondering why I don't feed myself and worry about that. But it's actually the power for your soul that the difficulties people are facing and maybe they don't even know what type of sickness was coming towards them. When they spoke to a shaykh and the shaykh said, give more, oh why I should part for more? Well because your soul doesn't have the energy that's necessary for the testing that's about to come and as a result they become sick, they go through difficulties and they want to go see medical doctors only and they only want to take the, the certain medicines and, and eat these special uh, vegetables. But also reminder with all of those practices the most important and powerful is that the soul and the attention to the soul and that did we do the service that was necessary for the feeding of the soul. Do I spend time to meditate and connect my heart with Prophet with awliyaullah and make that connection, make and feel that love and feel that energy? Am I more selfish or selfless? When I'm connecting and thinking about the shaykh and thinking and connecting with that ocean of energy, means all of these practices, these are the food of the soul. And that makes the, the reality of Surat al-Bala to be understood when Allah is describing the feeding of the captive. We describe these categories of people who eat at Allah's Divinely table by awliyaullah who only want the face of Allah is their compensation. But the only one who can sit at that table, their character has to be of that nature. One, they're yateem. If they understood that their yateem means they're cut off from all their dunya connections. Parents, friends, relatives no longer make sense to them. They're cut from their dunya connections as a result of being yateem and orphaned whom do they belong to? Prophet why did he say the orphan is dear to me? One, the physical orphan because you'll get there but most important the spiritual orphan, the one who realized his ties are broken because of his belief. In a world filled with material desires they no longer feel that connection with material people and they become orphaned like Sayyidina Yunus, Sayyidina Yusuf salam, thrown in the well. As soon as you're thrown in the well nothing makes sense to you. The one whom is the father of all the orphans is Sayyidina Muhammad because these are the souls that are now disconnecting and moving towards Divinely Presence where those associations and those gatherings and those fellowships are no longer important for them. And the fellowship of improvement and the fellowship of love of Sayyidina Muhammad is all that they desire. As a result Prophet is the one whom loves them and guides them. The one who realizes he is an orphan then no doubt his heart should be connected to orphans. Because you find yourself that you are orphan too. Mother and father they, they did whatever they want in the end they left you without nothing thinking of you. Of course you're orphaned in this world. 
and it becomes your love for those whom are also physically orphaned because you are one of them. You realized how you are orphaned in this world. So it means then it builds the companionship with the people whom Allah holds dear. When we realize that we are orphaned in the way of Allah when you realize that you're yateem and that you're miskeen and that you're poor, that you don't have the wealth of this world, you don't have the means of this world and you didn't seek out a life of the means of this world, you realize that you are miskeen. That you're poor in Allah's way but Allah al qani, Allah is the one who is rich. And as a result of that then those whom of a similar liking, similar nature, humble reality they gather around the miskeen and that they found themselves to be poor in Allah's way that Allah is rich, Allah is powerful. I mean all of these realities we find within ourselves. When we find those and, and, and bring out its beautific reality, your natural magnetism will be towards those people. If you're miskeen in Allah's way means that you realize Allah is wealthy, you are nothing. And whatever Allah grace has given to you, you're not like the people whom are hunting every type of dunya for huge projects, you realize, oh Ya Rabbi that's a different world. Whatever you're going to give to me is going to be in paradise. As a result your, your khuluq and your character becomes of a humble nature. When you're humble, the humble they, they magnetically move towards you because now your magnetism is based on your character. Arrogant people don't have magnetism towards humble people. So then their gatherings are arrogant, obnoxious people because their magnetism is pulling those characteristics. But the characteristic Allah is asking for us is be yateem, recognize your cut. And if you're not cut, you're doing something wrong. Those are those emails, oh shaykh, I accepted Islam but I don't know, I have a hard time when I go to parties to keep my Islam. Well you shouldn't be at those places. You should have divorced yourself of all of those characteristics and say, for Allah I'm no longer doing those things. And as a result you find that people don't like your company. So relatives would never invite us because we had turbans, beards and kufis. They say, oh he's always, I don't know, he's going to talk about praying in our party, we don't want to invite him anymore. No family party, no nobody invite you anymore. You wear your beard, you put your hat and that's your your loss of all invitations. So of course you sit in your home and say, I'm, I'm yateen. And then your heart comes, yes you are yateen. And I described many times before early in our path the sadness of a yateen, we sit for yateen and watch and see the horrible sadness of these children. And there's yateens in America, West everywhere. And when they're young they're hoping to be adopted. As they get older every birthday is an immense sadness for them because the reality is they know that as they get older they're not cute puppies anymore. As they get older less likelihood of somebody coming to get them. So every birthday like an immense sadness for them. And they had documentaries and they show birthdays are their most horrific experience as they were getting older. And I was watching these and watching this, how, how horrifically sad that is. And then I would feel like that on Isra wal Miraj. And I would think to myself, Ya Rabbi, oh, this Isra, inshaAllah, come and get me. I'm going to have some amazing experiences. Oh, everything going to be great. Isra would come and go. And I would visualize myself like a child waiting at a bus that nobody came to pick me up. And you, you recognize yourself. You realize, Ya Rabbi I'm yateem, I don't make sense to people and it, when are you going to come to take me? And then your, your, your spiritual reality changes and as a result of being from that ocean your heart connects with that reality. You feel the suffering of those people whom nobody comes to get them. 
and that is your responsibility to feed them, to watch over them, to do whatever you can from your means, however small it may be in the scope of, of millions of people but for my own soul I must do it because I recognize that sadness, I feel that sadness. And every holy event sitting there and visualizing my child like a child on a suitcase that nobody came to get me. And you keep practicing and keep practicing with all sincerity until Allah sends a day in which the soul opens and the angelic realities dress the soul, bless the soul. But first we find it within ourselves and then we identify and our magnetic juzbah then moves towards those types of people whom they are yateem, they are cut off, they are miskeen, that they have, they have no means compared to dunya people and they feel the lowliness of dunya. And as a result they also with ahsi, those whom are captive and they felt their captivity, they felt the infliction of shaitan upon themselves from releasing. Shaitan doesn't release the soul, doesn't allow the release of soul. It's such a significant fight and difficult fight that every time you feel you're going to get better again shaitan throws something difficult upon. Then of course you, you sympathize with a captive and you watch these, these, these types of action movies and how the person is held captive and how they're put into ransom, how they're held in a dungeon and you realize that is my soul and I'm continuously trying to escape and every time I feel I'm escaping they grab my legs again to try to bring me back down. So alhamdulillah this spiritual path is, is very deep and everything that we put upon ourselves, <clears throat> practice upon ourselves, if we do correctly the magnetism for the physical world will be of that nature. If you're hum humble your magnetic reality is going to be through humble people. You'll be surrounded by those whom they, they feel a, a juzbah, a magnetic pull to the humble people, to the good and pious and, and caring people inshaAllah. <clears throat> As a result, show me your friends and then I show you who you are. That once we build ourselves and perfect ourselves, Allah describes for us our magnetism will draw the same character of people to be surrounded by us. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us on these holy nights and understand the complexity of this binary system. Thinking that we'll feed ourselves and, and take care of our health with good eating and, and delicious things and, and the reality is feed somebody else so you'll be much healthier. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Rasulit al-Fatiha.